Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Woe. So, a few weeks ago, I did my top 10 all time favorite authors. And uh, in that list, I kind of, one thing that sort of emerged for me was hey, a lot of these are people I can't buy from anymore <laughs> because they are dead. Um, God rest their soul. But uh, that made me kind of think like, well, I want to include like a lot of authors that I read a lot of don't really qualify for this list, but like, I still kind of want to shout them out. And so the idea I sort of stumbled upon was this idea of doing like auto buy authors. So authors who I always buy what they come out with or like some variant of that to kind of give you a sense of a little bit broader sense of the authors that I read on a regular basis. So there will definitely be some overlap with that list for authors who are still alive and writing, but I definitely feel like overall this gives like a little bit wider view into the people that I'm routinely reading new books from. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we'll start with the True Blue auto buys, and then I have a couple of other sort of like adjacent categories. And I should just say that for me, what I consider to be auto buy is that my assumption is when this person has a new book out, I will buy it. And I will not buy it on an exception basis. So meaning that my assumption is when one of these people comes out with a new book, I assume that I will buy it. And if I do some investigation and realize like, oh, this really isn't going to work for me for some reason, then maybe I might decide not to get it. But I assume that if I find out that that person is releasing two books this year, I will be getting both of those books, if that makes sense. So with that definition in mind, my first auto buy author is Roxane Gay, who was also on my top 10 favorite authors list. I think she was number four. So yeah, I assume that when Roxane Gay has a new memoir or a new short story collection that I'm going to want to buy it. Um, there is one of her novels that I know that I'm not going to buy or read, which is an untamed state because I just don't think I would be able to deal with the content for that one for an entire book. But again, it's an exception basis. In general, I assume that if Roxane Gay has a new book out, I'm going to buy it. The next one is Ta-Nehisi Coates. Uh, and that's just because I find him to be such an interesting thinker and somebody whose work is so, I think, kind of central to the discourse of a lot of different podcasts and sort of like news outlets um, that I engage with uh, that I want to know what he's writing because it's an important part of that conversation. So yeah, I consider him to be kind of an auto buy or an auto read author. On a totally different note, Mariana Zapata is probably like one of the most true blue auto buys for me in this entire thing because I have like, I don't foresee a time unless she just really changes what she's doing where I wouldn't automatically just buy whatever her new book is because they are so immersive and exactly the kind of slow burn contemporaries I like. And her voice is not for everyone, but for me is just so crackalicious that like, yeah, I always want the new Mariana Zapata when it comes out. And I think only really one of them would I consider that I've read to be an, a disappointment. So I don't foresee her losing that status anytime soon. Now I'm always on delay with Tessa Dare. Like I'm never fully caught up to all of her books and I still actually have some of her backlog I need to get to, but I always buy her newest book, usually in e-form when it comes out because she just writes the kind of light, fun historicals that I really like to read. So I like to have them on deck ready for me when I get in the mood for a Tessa Dare book. And then Gary Tobbs, I would probably put in the category of because this book was so life-changing. I will always probably be interested in what he's writing or working on. So I think basically this is a situation where like one book earned him kind of an auto buy for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I'm just really interested in kind of the, the way he approaches science writing is something that I really enjoy. Michael Lewis is someone who I have as an auto buy audio person. So, and I say auto buy, sometimes I end up getting them from the library, but Whenever he has new things coming out, I like to read them. Um, I'm too behind right now just because of the way things have worked out, but I have The Fifth Risk and I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, yeah, just a thinker I really enjoy and, and really a master of narrative nonfiction. I think I put him at number 10 on my top 10 favorite authors, but yeah, I always wanna keep up with what he's writing. And then like the last of my true blue auto by authors is Alona Andrews because Alona Andrews is my favorite living writer. and. I just love it all. I've never read a series from this team that I haven't loved. I'm not necessarily somebody who reads their new releases immediately when they come out. 
um, because frankly, I like to kind of bank them a little bit and save them for a, a day where I'm really in the mood for it. Um, so for instance, they have a bridging novella that they released in November that I auto bought, which was, uh, I think, Burning Diamond. And I wanted to save it because they have the next book in the Hidden Legacies series coming out in the fall, and I want to read the novella right before I read that book. So anyway, all that to say, it's not that I'm reading them immediately, but I am automatically buying whatever they put out. So those are my like sort of true blue auto buy slash auto read authors. Um, the other ones on this, I have three different other categories on this list of a type of auto buy that I wanted to address. So first is that I do not auto buy all Nora Roberts or auto read all of Nora Roberts because she just writes so many different types of books <laughs> that not all of them are auto reads for me, but her standalone thrillers are auto reads for me. I read it every summer. That's just like what I've started doing for the last three or four years. Um, so there is like one type of book for, from her that is an auto buy for me. And then I have four authors I wanted to mention who I would consider to be auto buys for the first book in a series that they're starting. And then from there, I may or may not continue in the series, but I always at least want to see what they're doing with um, the new series that they come out with. First being Jennifer Lynn Barnes, um, just based on the strength of her Naturals series. This is my favorite YA contemporary mystery series that I've ever read. I absolutely love it. So I will always read at least the first book and new series that she puts out. Similarly, one of my all-time favorite series is the Side Changeling series. So I will always read at least the first book in an Alini Singh series when she puts them out. This is true for her contemporaries. This is true for her paranormal slash urban fantasy books. And then um, I actually have on pre-order her first sort of like thriller that she's ever written. So I'm really excited for that. But I will always want to at least see what she's up to because I absolutely adore the Psy Changeling series. I like the Guild Hunter series and I like her contemporaries, but like this I adore. So I will always want to read um, what she's up to basically. Third would be Jessica Clare. Um, she is kind of on the bubble between True Blue auto buy for me and um, new series auto buy. I think just because some of her recent series haven't been as successful for me, I think I probably would put her more into I will always at least try her new series category. Um, but I just really love she's very humorous and she writes in a lot of different genres um, under different pen names. So yeah, in general, I really she's an author I really enjoy. So I want to check her out. And then the fourth in that category is Courtney Milan. Um, because she writes historical romances, which is not my favorite subgenre, some of her series just haven't connected for me as much, but I absolutely adore the Brother Sinister series so much that um, she, you know, she might actually be more fairly characterized sort of like Tessa Dare, where maybe she is an autobi author for me, but I just keep her kind of banked for when I'm in the mood for what she does. So I don't know, she's sort of in between, but she's definitely somebody whose work I'm actively following and actively like keeping up with what she's putting out. Okay, and then two kind of random <laughs> um, ones, which I thought of, which was my auto buy ebook sales. So these are two authors who, no matter what I've heard about the book, or and like if I have read it, what I personally felt about the book, their their ebooks, if they go on sale, I will buy. The first is Penny Reed, and that's because her books are somewhat hit or miss for me. I like some better than others, but they're very like I really like what they do when I'm in the mood for that. So I don't always really want to pay the full like $5.99, $7.99 or whatever for an ebook, but if it goes on sale or sometimes they even drop down to free then I will pick them up. Actually, I should also put one other author in this category, and that is Noelle Adams, because her eBooks very frequently will go down to $199.99 or, or $0. Um, and I have a price alert, so whenever that happens, I will pick up a Noelle Adams at those prices. And then finally, could we really make it through a list without talking about Agatha Christie? No. Um, any, her eBooks do not go on sale all that frequently, so anytime I get a price alert that one of her eBooks has gone on sale, I pick it up because... Yeah, I would love to have all of her. I would like to have her entire oeuvre in ebook, but they are quite expensive. So I like to wait when I can for a sale. So that was a slightly different take on sort of favorite authors, but I hope that that shows um, a little bit more kind of like who I'm keeping up with their releases on, like in particular, there are so many others and there's always ones that are sort of like coming in to this list and like are on the bubble. So like 
At this point, I would say maybe like a Rebecca Roan horse is probably somebody who is close to being on the, I will always try, at least try a new series from her because I love Trail of Lightning so much. Um, I think Mark Lawrence might be edging into that category. Grace Draven, I think is also one who usually I'll check out a first book from her. Like I have, a, I have several authors who I think are like, kind of on the bubble. Um, but I just wanted to give you kind of a sense of whose work I'm like really focusedly, I know when their releases are coming out for. Um, yeah, just to give you a sense of my my reading tastes. But anyway, I hope that was interesting. Uh, let me know if you have any auto buy authors or at least um, authors who you'll always kind of check out what they're doing first in a series kind of thing or anything like that. Let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, I think that will do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.